Hi everyone, today we are going to be looking at one of my favourite activities that I use multiple times throughout the year. It's called What's in the Box and I really like it because it gives me an opportunity every day to get kids estimating, counting, writing numerals, ordering numerals and counting the quantity. So what you'll need for this activity is a box. I, use, I like to use a clear box so that the students can see the counters inside. Emma's Big Counting and some post-it notes. So I like to use Emma's Big Counting because on this page, before Emma and Leo start counting their big collection, they start to estimate. And I like to use this page because this is where we talk about what a reasonable estimate is. So we would talk about what would be a good estimate of this collection would 2000 be a good estimate would four be a good estimate and we talk about why and that's a really good way to get the kids thinking about how to make a good estimate based on what you can see of the quantity then i show each of the students the box and so what they're allowed to do is shuffle the counters around um, and have a look so that they can sort of make mental groups in their head but what they're not allowed to do is count each counter one by one so i put a time limit on the amount of time that they're allowed to look at the counters and then they pass it to the next person and what i do is i give each student a post-it note and their job is to write their numeral on the post-it note which is a really great way to practice number formation for example some students might write their numeral like this and we can talk about how we need to fix that before we start to make our class number line so then what we do is we create a number range and that number range is going to form our number line. So what we would do is we would talk about what is the smallest estimate in the class, what is the largest estimate in the class, and then we use that to create our number line. So in this instance, the smallest estimate that we had was six. So we're going to put that all the way over here at the beginning of our number line. And the largest estimate that we have is 18. So we would go ahead and put that over here. And then we know that all of the other estimates have to go somewhere in between. So then what the students would need to do is they need to use their numeral to then say, well, I have 17. I know 17 goes before 18, so I'm gonna put that just there. And every student would then come up to the whiteboard or the wall and come and place their numeral where they think it would go. Um, leaving the appropriate gap. So we would talk about how there are going to be some numbers in between, but because we're using our estimates to make the number line, we're just going to leave a space where we think it would go. And don't be afraid to you know, rejiggle some of the numbers if you need to move them across. And if students have the same, we'll either put them on top or put them above. Then as a class, you can start to integrate some discussion around data. So what was the most popular number choice, how many numbers are there all together, that kind of thing. Once we've done that, it's then time to count. So I usually will choose a different student every time we do this to count the collection. And usually we're sitting in a big circle and the student that's counting can pour all the counters into the middle of the circle and show us how they're going to count them. Finally, after reading Emma's Big Counting, they will not try to count the counters one by one because we know that sometimes that makes us lose our place in where we are in the count but they might start to organize it instead so if they've read emma's big counting they might start to organize the counters into 10 frames so now we have 10 and we have 20 and then we have two left over and then there would be a discussion around how many counters are there all together how do you know how many tens how many ones that kind of thing and then of course the students are going to want to know whose number was the closest but what i want to talk about is what was the difference between the, the closest estimate and the actual quantity and to do that i like to use a number line so what i would do is i would say um, the closest estimate was 18 in our collection but the actual number was 22. so what is the difference between these two numbers so then you use the number line however you like so you can um, jump to 20 and say that was plus two and then we jump to 22 and that was another plus two so the difference between the closest estimate 18 and 22 was four as time goes on hopefully students are going to get better at estimating the collections of counters um, because estimating is such an important part of our everyday life as adults we use it to estimate how much something is going to cost 
what the discount off a certain item is that we want to purchase. So we really want to get kids to get good at estimating, even in the early years. So I hope you like this activity. You can um, find Emma's Big Counting on the teacher author website. It's a really great way to start this activity by using a picture book. So um, make sure you subscribe to this channel and you can find Emma's Big Counting available on the teacher author website. We will see you at our next lesson. Bye for now.